Hello and welcome to another episode of Orbital News. I'm your science communicator, Alex Giorfanos, and today in space, let's talk about the Parker Solar Probe mission that launched from Earth recently. The Parker Solar Probe is heading to within a few million miles from the surface of the sun to touch the solar corona. The data gathered by the probe will hopefully help us answer mysteries of space weather and the fusion reactor in the sky we call the sun. Here's what you need to know. Let's begin. The Parker Solar Probe launched in the dark early morning or late night, depending on how your day was going. There was a launch window open until August 23rd to compensate for any scrubs or delays. The spacecraft was named after Eugene Parker, who in the 1950s, according to NASA.gov, proposed a number of concepts about how stars, including our sun, give off energy. Dr. Parker was actually in attendance at the launch itself, which was really great. I, I can only imagine what it was like for him to have a spacecraft built to test his own theory in his own lifetime. It's pretty amazing. Uh, Dr. Parker called the cascade of energy from the sun solar wind and described an entire complex system of plasmas, magnetic fields, and energetic particles that make up this phenomenon. Parker also had a theory that the solar corona, corona, or the sun's superheated solar atmosphere, is actually hotter than the surface of the sun, which, of course, is contrary to what is expected by the laws of physics as we know them. The solar probe took a ride into orbit aboard a ULA Delta IV heavy rocket vehicle. A good visualization of the spacecraft inside the fairing comes from this graphic from CEO and President of the United Launch Alliance, Tori Bruno, who tweeted it out. Thank you, Tori. Visualizations like this are extremely important in science communication to help explain to anyone the scale of these rockets. As you can see, the Delta IV Heavy can send a full whale into space with room to spare, and I think that's a blue whale if I'm not mistaken. The spacecraft itself is just over three meters in length or about 10 feet long. The widest part of the spacecraft, which is the heat shield, is 2.3 meters in diameter or seven and a half feet. My favorite way to visualize the spacecraft, however, is to think of it as roughly two Danny DeVitos in length. What will the orbit of the Parker Solar Probe be like? Great question! This orbital animation of the Parker Solar Probe and this quote from NASA's Scientific Visualization Studio best explain how the spacecraft will move through space and conduct science of the sun. The Parker Solar Probe moves in a highly elliptical orbit using gravity assists from Venus to move the orbit perihelion closer to the sun with each pass. Perihelion, for those of you who are hearing the word for the first time, or just need a quick refresher, it's the part of the circular orbit that's closest to the sun. The goal is to get the spacecraft to fly through the corona at a distance of 9.5 solar radii. Primary science operations are conducted when the spacecraft is within 0.25 astronomical units from the sun, or a quarter of the distance from the Earth to the sun. The nominal end of the mission for Parker Solar Probe is 2025. Essentially, the orbit of the spacecraft is set up to use the sun's gravitational well to bring the spacecraft closer and closer to the sun with each orbital pass. The spacecraft will be conducting its primary science when it's orbiting close to the sun. One of the questions I like to address is something a friend asked me and something that has been echoed online a lot since uh, the Parker Solar Probe was prepping for launch. Will the Parker Solar Probe actually touch the sun? So no, technically the PSP will not actually touch the sun. It will touch the corona or pass through the corona, which would be like saying I touch the earth, but instead you just graze the upper atmosphere in a flyby. Good marketing phrase, but it has been confusing and definitely for science communication could have been worded better. Most people I've talked to were confused how something could get that close and not incinerate or melt. And to be honest, before I had researched this, I was only going off of what I had seen in headlines before I got to researching it, and I imagined it grazing by the surface of the sun, although I had a hard time believing that's what actually was happening. So then how will it work? The Parker Solar Probe has a heat shield on front that is designed to handle the extreme temperatures of the sun it will experience during its time touching or passing the solar corona. 
The idea is that the heat shield will always be between the sun and the spacecraft. So it's robotically controlled to maintain that position uh, with hydrazine booster that reacts when sensors on the back end of the spacecraft detect sunlight. In the shadow of the heat shield, the spacecraft is built to survive where the temperature radiating from the sun will reach nearly 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,377 degrees Celsius. You might be wondering, on Earth, when it's a hot day in the shade, as wonderful as it is, it's really still hot. So why would the shade help the spacecraft survive? Wouldn't it just be a little bit colder? I mean, can it really keep the spacecraft cool enough? Well, I thought about it and did some research and here's how I think it'll work. On Earth, the reason why you're still relatively hot in the shade is because the air around you has also been warmed up. That means there's only a small but noticeable difference in the shade where the Parker Solar Probe is heading Within 3.83 million miles of the sun, there are superheated and energized particles expelled from the sun that reach that 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Each of those particles is extremely hot and contains lots of energy. But most of the space around the spacecraft, including behind the carbon composite heat shield, is still within the vacuum of space. So yes, if the spacecraft gets hit with solar particles, then it will get hot, but there is nothing else there. Space basically is an empty vacuum, so there are not enough particles to heat the space nearby and behind the spacecraft so that spacecraft in the shade would fail or melt that close to the sun. The spacecraft in the shade will see temperatures close to what we feel on Earth. Now, that's not to say we have everything figured out. In fact, we have never gone this close to the sun, and we still don't understand most of the phenomenon and dynamics of the inner atmosphere of the sun. What are the different parts of the sun, including the corona? I'd love to tell you. So the sun has a few layers to it, not unlike our planet. There is the core, then there's the radiative zone, and after that, the convection zone. The surface of the sun is called the chromosphere. The part of the sun that the Parker Solar Probe will actually touch is called the corona, or the atmosphere, if you want to relate it to Earth. A major mystery that the Parker Solar Probe may be able to explain is the strange nature of something called solar wind. Solar wind is something coined by Parker himself. It describes the flow of particles from the sun. Our Earth is hit with these particles and everything from planets to asteroids and comets that come in contact inevitably take a ride on the solar wind. The Planetary Society and Bill Nye, the science guy, have created a spacecraft called the Light Sail that uses a sail, not unlike a sailboat, to ride along the solar wind to be carried and propelled in space without the use of engines or fuel. The fuel is the sun's solar wind. Now, of course, that means you'll get the most thrust by moving away from the sun, and at a certain point, you'll move so far away from the sun that the solar wind has little to no effect. You'll still need to use orbital mechanics to really get anywhere, but uh, the particles from the sun, they're not that massive, and the solar wind itself is not that dense. So you'll definitely be able to propel and maneuver in space with a solar sail, but it's not a fast trip, or better said, it's not accelerating you very fast. The Planetary Society's Light Sail 2, their second solar sail uh, spacecraft, is being prepared to launch later in November of 2018. So, in conclusion, the Parker Solar Probe will be a great scientific tool to help us explain some of the big mysteries of our solar neighborhood. Things we'll need when we decide to send humans across the solar system, and conditions we'll look for in stellar systems to see if they have similar conditions for life like ours to survive. This mission is really exciting, and I'm excited to see what we find out when the Parker Solar Probe first orbits the Sun around November of this year. One last quick fact. The Parker Solar Probe has on it lots of names that were submitted before the spacecraft launched. NASA hosted a period where you could submit your name to fly to the sun. Among many people online, including some space friends, my name, as well as Today in Space, are on board this Parker Solar Probe. So I want to thank the United Launch Alliance and Tori Bruno for successfully launching the Parker Solar Probe and all of our names with it. It's a great launch vehicle. It was really fun to watch it launch. Um, and by doing this, hopefully we can answer some of the greatest mysteries about one of the most important objects in the night and day sky. 
We'll also be able to see if Dr. Parker's ideas on solo wind are correct, which, if in any scenario, right, wrong, or it's complicated, we will expand our knowledge of our sun and an effect of space weather. These are the types of scientific missions that can potentially change the way we look at the universe and help us understand better what is happening and expand our thought on what is really out there. All of it is prep for sending humans safely throughout the final frontier, but this mission it can also help us better understand our own neighborhood star that breathes solar wind across the solar system, giving life to our own planet. When you look at it that way, it's kind of amazing more people aren't talking about it. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Orbital News here on Today in Space. Don't forget, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and YouTube. Please give us a thumbs up on the video if you're watching, or head over to iTunes and give us a review. It goes a long way to get the show out to more people and help us in our mission to spread love and spread science. I am your science communicator, Alex Giorfanos, and until next time, I hope you have a great week. Stay safe out there. We'll see you.